And today we're talking about how to choose a trustee for a revocable living trust. So uh, Jennifer, how do you pick a trustee yeah. for your trust? So I will say this topic is probably one of the hardest, um, hardest uh, things to decide when working on an estate plan, um, other than at what age or ages your kids are getting the assets. It's, it's, but who's going to be managing these assets um, for um, either myself, if I'm incapacitated, or at my death, who's going to be administering the trust? Um, and if I'm creating trust for future beneficiaries or younger beneficiaries, who's going to be managing that? And I'd say for the most part, clients tend to default to their kids. My kids are going to do it. Um, and I see it typically in one, two different ways. One is they default to the oldest and they go in age order down. Whether or not the oldest is best equipped to actually manage and be the trustee, we don't know. But now I've gotten into the habit of asking that question. Second is clients love to have all of their kids as co-trustees. And so anytime I hear either one of those, I talk to clients a lot about just the, the practicalities of it. And, and, and part of my role is kind of devil's advocate. What, what could possibly go wrong with this? You have a great family, everyone gets along, and I apologize in advance, but part of my role is to talk to you guys about what if Jill and John you know, don't get along or don't agree with the, um, the course of action for the administration. And in that scenario, everything just gets stalled. Everything gets stopped. And, um, and it's very difficult to get to a place sometimes where two people can agree on how to proceed. Um, and remember, they're, they're making pretty big decisions. They're making decisions on whether to retain assets or sell assets. Sometimes you have clients who, you know, one beneficiary will want to keep the asset, the other will not. If they're both the trustees, that is incredibly problematic to try and get that solved. Um, so oftentimes I talk to clients about at least you want one person is typically the, my preference. And maybe having a child who is also a beneficiary is not the right decision um, because they have a difficult job, admittedly, because they're wearing two different hats. They're wearing the hat of a beneficiary. They're also wearing the hat of a trustee. And, you know, sometimes it's very hard to distinguish between the two or keep in mind which one of those roles are you actually fulfilling at that moment. So I talk to clients a lot about someone else, someone neutral who can manage the trust. Obviously, a huge part of this also is how long is this trust going to exist for? Is it just a period of administration till it hits the beneficiaries? that's going to be a much shorter process. Is it a lifetime trust that's in existence for the lifetime benefit of your children who are now 20? I mean, that's a long, potentially long administration. So how long are we looking at? Um, other options are trusted friends or family members who are not a beneficiary of the trust. A uh, second would be working with a bank or a trust company who can do it. And then third is a private or professional fiduciary. There's a handful of excellent private or professional fiduciaries here in town. And essentially, they're an individual who it's their job uh, to act as a trustee or a fiduciary for people. They have a good background in this area. Um, they're either <laughs> former lawyers, accountants, paralegals. Um, they're properly insured, they have the background, but they're an individual as opposed to a bank. So those are kind of the other options to think about. Yeah, and I think it's like, there's so much emotions at this time when you're trying to pick a trustee, because like you're thinking, if I'm not here, who's gonna do the right thing, right? Yeah. So that's like something that's important, who has knowledge or experience in like dealing with the size of assets you may have, right? And then Correct, who yeah. has the time, Right, because sometimes your eldest child uh, may be at the peak of their career or, or right. something else, or they have grandchildren that they're it's chasing after. It's, um, yeah, no, so, and again, those are kind of the practical questions that sometimes, you know, again, we don't have a crystal ball. We don't know when this person is actually gonna need to step in to act as a trustee. So that's the other time I remind clients, you should be updating your document or reviewing your document every two to five years. 
and then making sure that that person who you've selected still works because maybe um, you know, maybe the certain person who you listed as successor trustee was appropriate for the first five years, but isn't any longer. Um, and yeah, and w you know, what is their situation? I do have a handful of clients who say, you know, daughter one is just too busy. You know, she just simply has too much going on. Um, and this other person is better equipped to it. I also always remind clients they should get compensation because it is a job and it has fiduciary duties and obligations um, and risk exposure, liability exposure attached to it as well. So it, you have to think of it like a job and they should be getting compensation for it. So oftentimes people default to family members because they're like, well, they, they don't need compensation. They shouldn't get that. That is not the right response to this. Yeah, yeah, it is work, and it's there's a lot of risk associated with being a, a trustee. So, yeah. um, so you need to think about all that. Yeah, and especially when family members may not get along, or there are yeah. different economic means between yeah. family members. Uh, yeah. I could definitely that, see that happen. Yeah, that's one of so the first if questions you have, I ask. Yeah, is do uh, the beneficiaries get along? Do they yeah. have a good relationship? So, no, that's great. Um, so if you haven't uh, looked at your trust documents and you haven't reviewed who your trustee is, or if you want to have a conversation with Jennifer or myself to kind of walk through that uh, review type process, please reach out to us. And uh, thank you for watching. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you.